Welcome back guys. I'm here in what I consider this truly epic location. Let me know if you agree in the comments down below, but it is beautiful. So I'm out here just outside of Tucson and I found this, uh, this trail that I hadn't been down. I'm out here riding my 19 KTM 300 XCW dual sport and uh, got to this point right here you can see that hill climb on the other side there uh, the trail kind of starts to peter away after going down this hill right here and it is very very loose so I stopped here because I'm gonna wait until I come out here with somebody else so that I have somebody with me and secondly when I get rid of this dual sport tire on the back of here and instead put a, a more knobby tire on there because this thing is slick as ice out here in the uh, really loose uh, gravel type of terrain. So what I want to talk about today real quick, if you just stick with me, um, I've been testing out my KTM 300 XCW as more of a dual sport. And when I say dual sport, I don't mean that I'm riding this thing around on the road, commuting, uh, doing any kind of highway work. Instead, what I mean is a plated dirt bike. A dirt bike that I put a plate on, made sure that I had a, a stop brake light, some turn signals, some additional lighting up front, an oversized fuel tank, um, DOT tires, and yeah, so, so far, I have been loving this thing as my primary bike. And I also have a KTM 500 EXCF that is dual sported as well. And when I ride these bikes back to back, the two stroke versus the, the 500, yes, the 500 is better on the road. But when you get out here to stuff like this, I prefer to be on the two stroke. So the big question is, would you rather have a bike that performs better on the road and does pretty good off-road or would you rather have something that does eh on the road and does fantastic off-road I prefer the latter and so that's why I'm putting this 19 TPI to the test for a long-term dual sport use and so when I ride out here it's about 15 miles of road work and then there are other times out here in southern Arizona where I might have to hop on the highway for 30, 40, sometimes even 50 miles and uh, cruise to the next off-road section. And I think that this thing is comfortable enough to do that on. I have the seat concepts wide seat on it. So this gives you a nice platform for your tush. Scoop back on it, but then up front, when you're, uh, when you're really having to get down on it, squeezing the tank and whatnot, it has the stock profile up here towards the front. My, I really don't have any gripes, but let me just compare this bike to maybe some of the other options that you might say, well, what about this one? KTM 350 four stroke. Those bikes, are great off-road I wouldn't even say okay on the road because unless you gear them way up they are horrible above 50 miles an hour whereas this thing with a 48 to 48 tooth rear sprocket the stock front which I believe is a 14 maybe a 13 I'll have to double check that this thing will cruise at 65 miles an hour way better than a 350 four-stroke. Probably not as good as the 500, obviously, but it is manageable and it's not, it's not horrible. But I have ridden 350 dual four bikes, the 350 KTMs, and they just are horrible. 
at cruising on the on the roadway and that's what a lot of people think you know well the, the 350 displacement yeah the motor is really torquey and it's got good power but when you start to wind that thing up man the vibrations are out of this world so the ktm two-stroke is counterbalanced so this thing 55 is its sweet spot 55 is nice and smooth now i go above 55 and it's almost like the power valve wants to you know start to come open so at about 55 if i continue to accelerate it just wants to accelerate because that power valve starts to come open but if you keep it around that 55 mile an hour mark man you could just go cruise all day on this bike the counterbalance makes it super smooth i have my wheels balanced as well and then i got like these dual sport tires on here not not so much the front the front's just a regular motocross knobby but it's got a dot stamp on it the rear is the kenda k270 and it does great out here in the rocks especially when it's brand new these tires with the tubeless setup air them down when you get to the to the dirt and they grip really really well through the off-road sections and so this is getting i mean it looks pretty good but it's getting towards the end of its life for me um because now these side knobs are starting to crack and starting to peel away a little bit and i think that's from airing it down you know to around five psi and riding it like that in this uh, more gnarly terrain but this tire for the price is hard to beat it has a very gummy you can see the flex in that knob look at that thing and when you air it down it has a really wide profile and these side knobs just really bite onto the rocks sand horrible mud we don't get that out here that often horrible but the rocks hard pack is not very good either so it's kind of a toss-up so next tire I'm going to go with is going to be the IRC MB5 Evo, which multiple people have now recommended for a dual sport application, even though it's supposed to be a soft terrain because it's got really big lugs on it. So I'm going to put that tire on here. I'm probably going to run um, uh, tubeless as well with that because I like the idea of being able to uh, fix a uh, a puncture because out here there's a lot of people who burn pallets and there's nails and so you know pull a nail out plug it up but I've really only had one major failure with my front tire um, with the tubeless so as long as you stay on top of it and you check it every single time you ride the tubeless is a great option especially for like this dual sport type of application where you're going to get out to the trail, air down the rear tire, um, and then air back up, which I rarely do on the way home. I just say, by the time I'm done riding, I'm toast, and I'm just ready to get home. So I'll just, I'll ride back home with, uh, with five, six pounds in the rear. So let me know what you think. I've had a lot of mixed reviews. Everybody says, yeah, plate your, your 300, but dual sport, no way. I say, you're wrong, give it a try. Don't think about this like your old two strokes. This is not an old school two stroke. This TPI is ultra smooth. It's got great power. It's a six speed transmission. So it can cruise down the road at a low RPM. But yet when you get out here to the gnarly stuff, for creeping around in first and second, it is hard to beat the KTM 300 two stroke so come along for the ride and let me know what you think about dual sporting the ktm 300 xcw thanks guys peace out